Inspector Nave, do you have a moment? My time is of the essence. Be quick now. I suppose this is quite a complex case, Inspector. It is a robbery gone bad. Nothing more, nothing less. Surely there's a bit more to it than that. Please abstain from baseless conjecture, madame. The victim's body paints a simple picture, more reliable than any witness statement. Consider the impact of the bullet and note the concomitant lack of blood. A casual homicide. Nothing more. Don't you find it odd that the thief chose that one particular painting? Life is full of odd things, madame. Fingerless gloves, white dog poo-poo, nasal hair. I prefer to concern myself with murder. Did you see the alarm was sabotaged? I have interrogated the crime scene, madame. I am fully aware of the disabled security. I prefer biological evidence to the merely circumstantial. Body parts, blood, important things. Don't you think the disabled alarm is highly suspicious, though? The forensic team will be along shortly. Voice your concerns to them. Do not bother me with this circumstantial flifflaff. Why don't you check out the security camera footage? Madame, that is not my area of expertise. It is the body which concerns me. But the CCTV footage is evidence. It could help identify the killer. Correction, madame. It is but an indicator. The only true evidence is bodily fluid. Unless you know something I don't, then please leave me be. The only evidence Inspector Nave seemed to appreciate involved gore. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence, or concoct some. And the bloodier, the better. Josh? Yeah, Nico. So why do you need to get into the office again? I'm pretty sure the robbery was an inside job. And I think the proof is in the office. So, what's stopping you? Super cop over there. What if I create a distraction? You do that, and I will let you have whatever I find. That's a deal, Georges. Somehow, I had to get the inspector away from the office door. Inspector! Yes? What do you think about the American, Georges? He is deeply suspicious. Could you give me a statement, Inspector? Now is not the time, madame. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence or concoct some. And the bloodier, the better. Are you Hector Lane, the art critic? Enchanté, madame. And which of the angels are you? I'm Nico Kallar, a reporter. Ah, a fallen angel then, my favorite sort. What can you tell me about the painting that was taken? It was called La Maledicio, an unknown work that only recently surfaced. Who was the artist? A mysterious figure known only as El Serp, some say he was a student of Picasso. 
He was good, but not great, and his true identity remains unknown. What can you tell me about the theft? Oh, it was truly awful. What he want to know? Tell me about the shooting, monsieur. Well, it all happened so fast. Take your time. What did you see? I can't be sure. Perhaps I could answer your questions over dinner. I'm sorry, monsieur. I'm on a tight deadline. Did you see the thief? I would have tackled him, but he was too quick for me. Have you spoken to Georges? The American? Yes. He promised to clear up any misunderstandings the police might have about my presence here. What can you tell me about Henri's involvement with the gallery? Dear Henri, a shining diamond in the ordure that is the modern art business. He owned the gallery. What will we do without him? Did you know that the alarm had been sabotaged? No. How dreadful. I suppose that's why the alarm isn't ringing. Here's my press card. And there was I thinking you were too young and beautiful to be a reporter. Thanks for your help, Monsieur Lane. I wasn't going to get anything useful from Lane. Excuse me, Father. Father Simeon, my child. Are you okay, Father? It's a terrible shock, but yes, I'm fine, thank you. Could I ask you some questions about the crime? What kind of questions? I'm a reporter for La Liberté. I suppose it cannot hurt. Please ask away. Why did you come to the gallery today, Father? God brought me here. I saw the poster for the exhibition. I had to come. What do you mean? I knew there was great evil in La Maledicfio. It was my duty to confront it. The painter was El Serp, the serpent, don't you see? Evil? So what were you planning on doing here today? I wanted to bear witness to anything that the devil would conjure. Well, I think it was a no-show, Father. Really? A man is dead, Miss Collard. I'd say his work here today is done. That wasn't going to help my story. Did you see anything that might help identify the killer? The devil takes many forms, child. I didn't get a good enough look, I'm afraid. Anything would help. I am sorry, my dear. My mind was elsewhere. What do you know about Henri? An innocent victim, in so far as any of us are innocent. If he was peddling such blasphemous works as the El Serp painting, then who knows what other sins he was hiding. Father Simeon was making me feel guilty. Priests always did that to me. What can you tell me about the painting? Grotesque and evil. How can a painting be evil? By killing all who come into contact with it. Does that mean we're next? Laugh not at the devil's play, Miss Collard. Do you know anything about the painter, El Serp? He was a purveyor of blasphemy, a servant of the Antichrist. How can you know that? It is clear from his work. Father Simeon was making a lot of assumptions. This is my press card. As I said, I work for La Liberté. Good. Be sure to warn your readers that this painting is evil. Thank you for your time, Father. The priest had nothing useful to offer. The tomato sauce had splattered on the floor. 
The stain was a real mess. No way was I going to clean that up with my bare hands. It was a blob of chewing gum, probably carried in on somebody's shoe. Inspector! Yes? Have you seen that stain on the floor by the door? What do you think it is? I don't have time to waste discussing domestic hygiene. Please, leave me to my work. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence or concoct some. And the bloodier, the better. Monsieur Lane? My dear? Thanks for your help, Monsieur Lane. Lane had nothing to offer. Father. Yes, my child. What do you think about that stain? Is that blood? I think it's just sauce. I wonder if there's a mop anywhere. We are facing death and divine retribution. This is no time for tidying up. Father Simeon wasn't making much sense. Thank you for your time, Father. The priest didn't appear to know anything. Josh? Yeah, Nico? You said you needed to get into the office? And you said you were going to create a distraction. The bust was striking. I'd never met the gallery owner before, but he sure didn't deserve this. At least now the place was a little tidier. That wouldn't have worked. I scraped up the chewing gum with my press card, hoping the inspector wouldn't notice. Inspector! Yes? Do you want this chewing gum? Madame, I do not take bribes. I really think you should check out that stain. I told you, I am not interested. Leave the mess for the cleaner. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. That wasn't worth trying. This is my press card. As I said, I work for La Liberté. Good. Be sure to warn your readers that this painting is evil.
It was a nice idea, but wouldn't have worked. How about that for a distraction? I wondered whether it would be enough. Inspector! Yes? Have you seen the stain on the floor over there? It looks like blood. Indeed. How very curious. I must investigate immediately, before one of these idiots steps in it. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe it is time to employ... the machine. Okay, Georges. That should distract him for a while. Nice work, Nico. I'll let you know what I find in the office. I was sure the inspector hadn't seen me slip away, but I needed to be quick, because it wouldn't take him long. The CCTV system was ancient. It took individual shots and recorded them to tape. It looked like I needed to enter a passcode to view the recording. Nope. Hmm. I needed to find a four-digit number. The calendar looked like a child's school project. Omri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Poor guy hadn't quite made it to his big day. The poster advertised a 1975 Stockholm Music Festival, headlined by a group called the Harry Lobsters. And there I was, thinking that Henri might have set such an obvious code. No such luck. Hmm. I needed to find a four-digit number. Henri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Bingo. I rewound the tape to before the robbery. This was the first interesting frame. It was Henri studying La Maledixio. He couldn't have had any idea what was about to happen. That was the earliest shot with anything interesting on it. Nico and I were taking a look at La Maledixio just before the robbery. Funny, the painting didn't strike me as remarkable at the time. Just odd. A good view of La Maledixio. I could kind of see why Father Simeon thought it was evil. There was a certain presence about it. The killer caught in the act. There was nothing really distinctive about him. The moment it all went horribly wrong. The killer making his getaway. The painting was gone. There I was, taking a look at the alarm box. Hopefully I didn't look too suspicious. I hadn't thought about that when I was taking a look at the camera. That was the last shot. 
I realized I might have missed something from the earlier shots. Whoever was wearing that helmet was going to pay for what he did. A logo on the front of his helmet read Waterloo Motors. That could be useful. Poor Henri. The next shot had a better view of the writing on his helmet. Whoever was... That was the last shot. I got some leads on the killer's identity. A closer look at the painting might be useful. Whoever was wearing that helmet was going to pay for what he did. Poor Henri. The image was a little fuzzy, but in the center of the painting was what looked like a snake eating its own tail. I thought about what the priest said. There was definitely something unsettling about the picture. This frame caught the moment the killer took the painting. The most striking aspect of the painting was a snake eating its own tail. The most striking aspect of the painting was... I didn't like the idea of a pocket full of sharp pins. I didn't need a business card. Carrying an ink pot around inside my pocket would have been stupid. The ink would have stained my hands for days. I didn't feel the need to take Henri's eraser. I didn't want to carry the tape around. I had a feeling I wasn't going to need it. It was the paper that Nico wrote for. Nico lived for the day her story would be on the front cover. There was nothing else in the drawer. The folder looked interesting. This was very definitely tampering with evidence. It was a completion of work notice from a company called Vera Security. They weren't the guys we'd recommended. Henri had gone behind our backs to choose a different security outfit. Huh. I'd never heard of Vera Security, but there was an address and phone number on the form. A pair of evil eyes stared from a partially covered poster. I knew it'd be wrong to leave the room without checking it thoroughly. I didn't imagine Henri as a musician. A pair of evil eyes stared from a partially covered poster. It was a pretty flamboyant looking clock. Henri's notice board was covered with all kinds of junk. The statue was jaunty. Up close and personal, I could see that the fig leaf was hinged. Thankfully, there was no one around to see me do this. Very interesting. I wasn't going to open the safe without the key. I was fairly sure that even Henri wouldn't be silly enough to keep it hidden in the office. The secret compartment was open. There was no need to manhandle Henri any further. Henri had a model of a VW camper van painted in hippie colors. The engine capacity was displayed on the back. 1600 cc. 
Henri sure liked his clutter. The sofa had clearly taken some punishment over the years. It looked like Henri had saved the best booze for the back room. I didn't want to go back into the gallery just yet. I might not get another chance to look around. It was hard to tell if the lava lamp was retro or just plain old. Henri sure had his quirks. The telephone was an antique rotary model. The handset looked greasy. It was a hookah pipe. Those things gave me a headache. The trinkets, the junk, the instruments. Henri was kind of a hippie at heart. The woman in the picture looked vaguely familiar. The street was quiet. the frame containing pressed flowers. Henri may have been a hippie, but a hippie with plenty of disposable income. The completion note from Vera's security. There was an address. I opened the compartment again. Now that was a safe. No way I'd be able to pick it. That was almost a great idea. Almost. I had what I needed from the CCTV. I didn't want to go back into the gallery just yet. I might not get another chance to look around. In the trash can, I found a crumpled letter from Henri's credit card company, demanding immediate payment. It listed extravagant purchases from a variety of ladies' fashion stores. The address indicated that Henri lived in the chic and expensive 16th arrondissement of Paris. 
I decided to put the letter back, only his financial problems weren't my business. But now I knew where he lived. Monsieur, sir, you have snuck in here, and now you are tampering with my evidence. I'm just looking for the name of the caterer that cheese was to die for. Ah, to die for? Uh, to kill for. I put it to you, Monsieur... Monsieur... Stobart. George Stobart. I put it to you that you came here in search of cheese and killed the owner in a fromage-induced frenzy. Well, no. I'm from Paris Mutual. We insured the exhibition. Oh, uh, really? Yes, really. Mm. Time will tell, monsieur. Truth will out, inspector. Who dares wins, monsieur Stobart? He who laughs last laughs loudest, inspector Nave. The guy was seriously nuts. May I remind you, monsieur, that a serious crime has been committed. I am going to have to ask you to return to the gallery. Of course. But I do need to ask you a few questions. D'accord. But remember, anything you say can be used against you, Monsieur Stobart. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. It's very likely that the security camera holds a clue to the killer's identity. Monsieur, I am a professional, and you are an amateur, so... Leave the investigating to me, huh, pal? Do you know anything about a company called Vera Security? No, I have never heard of them. Now, I must get on with my investigation. Monsieur, you are American, no? Yeah, California born and bred. Of course. I think perhaps you are wanting to be like that Starsky and Butch, monsieur, no? Rolling around on top of fast cars with beautiful ladies, firing your gun. Interesting idea, Inspector, but not really my style. Indeed. Well, let me tell you something, Monsieur. You are my prime suspect. You may go now, but I will need to speak with you again. I had some valuable leads, but before following up on them, I had important business to attend to. Hey, Nico, you want to grab a quick cup of coffee? Sure. I am pleased to announce that I have finished my preliminary investigation. This is now an official crime scene, and you must all go. I shall be questioning all of you again in the coming days. Nobody is to leave the country, particularly you, Monsieur Stobart. Monsieur Lane will stay behind to help secure the premises. Mo? Yes, Inspector. Let them out. Right away, sir. Two coffees, please. Nice work in there, Nico. Whatever you did, it worked. I just made a tiny distraction, and Nave bought it. I think Nave would buy anything if it had blood on it. You know, this whole setup, the theft, the murder, it just doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Like I said, I think it was an inside job. Go on. Someone disabled the alarm, but on just one painting. Let me guess. La Maledictio. Exactly. And I aim to find out who did it. Well, the priest thinks La Maledictio is evil. 
Charles, she's just crazy. Yeah, you're probably right. But there's something strange going on. The CCTV picked up an image of the thief. His helmet had the words Waterloo Motors written across it. Interesting. I think I got a couple of good shots of him, too. But I need to take a better look at them at home. Great. Let me know what you find. I found the address of the security company Henri employed. It was not the one that I recommended. Good luck with your investigations. Well, I guess I should go. This story won't write itself. And Georges? Yeah? It's good to see you again. Great to see you too, Nico. I watched her walk away. The sound of traffic, the sun shining, a crime to solve. And Nico, back in my life. As I approached Henri's apartment, I started to doubt whether coming here so soon after his death was such a great idea. At the end of the road, I could see the magnificent Bois de Boulogne. Paris sure had a lot of similar looking cafes. Tony's Brasserie. Hmm, looked expensive. Parisian spring fashion. Reminds me why I love this city. I recognized the name Sasha from the charges listed in Henri's credit card letter. Unsurprisingly, the front door was locked. Excuse me, madame. Uh, this is George Stobart. Could I talk to you? George what? George Stobart, madame. I'm from the insurance company. For God's sake, did they have all this? I don't want to buy insurance. No, no, I, I, I'm not selling, madame. I, it's about the gallery theft. Oh, I see. You people move fast, don't you? This isn't a good time. I am so distraught. Madame, I... Right. Now that hadn't achieved much. It was the door to Henri's apartment. There was an intercom. I decided not to call her again quite so soon. I decided that using the buzzer would make more sense than attempting to dismantle the door. The address led me to a dead-end alley at the end of a deadbeat mall. No wonder I'd never heard of Vera's security. The place looked like it had been out of business for a while. Please don't touch the sign. You'll just make it worse. Hi. I wonder if you can help me. I'm looking for Vera's security. Yes, of course. It's the shop behind you. Thank you. Uh, the name's George, by the way. Call me Bassam. 
And do please forgive me, but I'm in no mood to talk. I have a resounding headache. Bad migraine, eh? The worst. The buzzing and flashing from the old sign is killing me. I thought the neon sign had potential until it broke. Is it your sign? No, the previous owners used to be a restaurant. But this is horrible. Adversely affecting my footfall and giving me a splitting headache. You want me to try fixing that sign for you? Do you know what you're doing? I'm very good at fixing things. Then please do. I'm no good at electricals. Marketing analysis and predicting trends is more my thing. Bassam had already told me where Vera Security was. Smell this! Whew. At least it's the real thing. Do you have any use for nail clippers? No. The stall was a myriad of retro kitsch. Bottle stoppers, keychains, musical cards. I took a good look at the sign. The wiring was exposed and the cover broken. No wonder it was flashing. I pulled the wire off. Well, that was one way to stop the letters flashing. Now only half the sign was illuminated. A small piece of wire. That would be pointless. The buzzing and flashing has stopped. And I am very grateful. But the sign still looks pretty terrible, doesn't it? When you're building a brand from the ground up, name is everything. I need a name that makes my customers long for adventure and treasures from faraway places. I could take a look at your sign, come up with something. You are like a genie from a magic lamp. Tell me about your business idea. This stall is going to put me through college while giving me field experience. But the nonsense sign is working against me. It should spell a name for my shop. I need something original, yet familiar, bright and in your face, yet subtle and symbolic. I decided to keep the wire. If Bassam knew how flimsy the sign was, he wouldn't be happy.
seeing the letters could be moved around. Shame it didn't have the right letters to spell Basam. I'd have to think of something else. seemed like a good name. Hey, Bissam, how about this? I know it's not your name, but... Aladdin. Very cool. <laughs> That's a terrific name for my store. Hits every one of my USPs. Glad you like it. You're a genius, George. Let me know if I can do anything for you. Aha, Mr. Stobart. What can I do for you? I really like your new sign. It's magnificent. I owe you one. What do you think? I'm over the moon, George. Thanks to you, I can now sell my retro cavalcade of musical cards, brushes, souvenirs. And you know what they say. Happy sellers make happy shoppers. So what are you selling? Ah, I'm glad you asked. I sell all those things you can't get anywhere else in Paris. Like? English biscuits, Turkish delight, French cassettes, Brazilian Betamax videos. <laughs> Vera Security. I was going to get some answers there. I hoped. The stall was a myriad of retro kitsch. Bottle stoppers, keychains, musical cards. Ah! Help! What's wrong? There's a monster! What? Where? On the floor! Get rid of it! Oh, the cockroach! Yes, the cockroach! Help! I went to take a closer look. Come here, little fella. That would have violated the Chemical Weapons Convention. Nope, I needed to try something else. There were crumbs on the floor. No wonder the cockroach was sticking around. That was never going to work. I refused to torture the little fella. Even cockroaches have rights. There was a huge cockroach in the way.
Romanovs, a Russian brand cigarette. The pack was empty. As a child, I'd always been told not to play with matches, but I never could resist. The ashtray was full of cigarette butts. The filters were gold colored, very exotic. I went to take a closer look. I tipped out the matches. I couldn't catch it just by swiping at it. I'd need to entice it closer. I set down my matchbox. Cockroaches like hiding in dark places. Not a bad idea when you think about it. Hmm. Cockroach wasn't going for it. I needed some bait. Hello, I'm Cockroach. I see the little beggar. The Vera phone. All expenses had been spared. Leave that radio alone and sort this damn cockroach. Aha, Mr. Stobart. What can I do for you? Do you happen to know a good way to catch a cockroach? To be honest, George, I'm better at questions on balancing budgets within a liberal economic framework. But as a layman, perhaps I could suggest you trap it? And please, whatever you do, don't squish it. Why is that? The entire family will catch the scent and arrive for the funeral. Ooh, we don't want that. You need to find a container of some sort. Then I think add this. Rich tea. Oh, what's that, a cookie? The perfect cockroach biscuit. Dry, dull, unsatisfying, and yet curiously Moorish. I'll give it a try. Glad to help. Thank you for the cookie. You're very welcome. I added some bait to the matchbox. <laughs> Even I was finding it hard to resist that little trap. Gotcha! You are a gentleman and no mistake. I hate cockroaches. Always ready to help a damsel in distress. I bet you are. Can I help you? Yes, please. Do you know if there's anyone in the office I can talk business with? Yes, me, chéri. I'm Annette, the manager. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean... The gloves. I, I just thought... Ah, easy mistake to make. If you haven't been reconstructed, that is. Oh, but I have been reconstructed. A number of times. From the ground up. Yes? There's been a theft at Le Lizard Bleu. A painting's been stolen. 
shame. Still, I'm sure you'll get over it. I believe your company set up the security. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, yes, you did. Didn't. Did. I've got all day. But I didn't. It says here that Vera was hired to do the security at the gallery. Didn't do a very good job, did you? Where did you get that? At the gallery. That job was signed off. You can't say we were to blame. I was getting a bad feeling. The place looked like a front, and the only person there wasn't helping. Maybe the office itself could give me more information. Are you done? Only I want to listen to this next race. I caught the cockroach. Look, isn't he a sweetie? Ah! Keep it away from me! Thanks. Look, do you mind not touching the office equipment? Annette's peripheral vision was, quite simply, astounding. Even the plant looked depressed. Do you mind? I'm listening to the race. Annette was watching me like a hawk. Nope. I needed to try something else. Hands off, mister. Can I just have a look? Certainly not. That book is very... private. That was never going to happen. That was almost a great idea. Almost. The aircon went nicely with the Art Deco detailing. I could hear the little fellow scuttling around in there. That wouldn't make any sense. The place looked like it had been out of business for a while. Nope, I needed to try something else. Aha, Mr. Stobart. What can I do for you? That cookie did the trick. Right customer, right product. It's a winning combination. Do you know anything about Vera security over there? Not really. I haven't been here long, but neither have they by the looks of it. Why do you say that? Rush setup, new sign, low investment, and no customers except for you. I didn't think there was much point. I caught the cockroach. Look! Excellent work. Just don't let it loose near my stall. In a few weeks, this place is going to be buzzing with people, I hope, not vermin. I think I'll keep him. I'll name him Trevor. Interesting name. Old school. Comforting. Harmless. Hmm. I can see you're quite a strategic thinker, George. The aircon went nicely with the Art Deco detailing.
That was never going to work. The place looked like it had been out of business for a while. The aircon went nicely with the Art Deco detailing. That wouldn't work. What can I do for you? Are you betting on a horse? No, I just like hearing the sound of hooves. Oh, well that's unusual. Don't be an idiot. I got 50 euros on lucky break. Ah, well I hope you win. So do I, Sherry. So do I. I've got a cookie. Those dry things are disgusting. Do you recognize it? Oof! That would take the hair off your legs. I had a boss who wore that. Know what I mean? Do these clippers look familiar? Yes. I, I mean, no. Why should they look familiar? Yeah, yeah, you've shown me already. No thanks. I've got some matches. Yes, I saw you pick them up. Keep them. I can't afford to smoke anymore. I caught the cockroach. Look, isn't he a sweetie? Ah! Keep it away from me! Thanks. That wasn't worth trying. Nope, I needed to try something else. That wouldn't work. The Vera phone. All expenses had been spared. It looked like there was a back office through the door. I didn't want to leave that there. That would be pointless. I only had a few matches. Using one now probably wasn't a good idea. Hello, Vera Security? George Stobart here. I can see you through the window, monsieur. Why don't you come in and stop wasting my time? George Stobart here. I can see you through the window, monsieur. Why don't you come in and stop wasting my time? I decided to stay till I'd squeezed what I could from Annette.
Hey, Nico, I've arrived at Vera Security. It's a pretty seedy outfit. Great. Anything else? Not right now. Well, call back if you find anything. Mr. Rickenbacker? Henri used a different security company from the one I recommended, Vera Security. I'm there now. It's a pretty low-grade outfit. Well, find out what you can. Do you mind? I'm listening to the race. Annette was watching me like a hawk. A crumpled cigarette pack. That was almost a great idea. Almost. I only had a few matches. Using one now probably wasn't a good idea. The ashtray was full of cigarette butts. Romanovs. It was empty. That wouldn't have worked. I didn't want to leave that there. I could hear the little fella scuttling around in there. Nope, I needed to try something else. Hello, Vera Security, we make you secure. That wouldn't make any sense. Oh, wrong number again, damn nuisance calls. Hello, Vera Security, we make you secure. That would be point. Nope, I needed to try something else. Nuisance calls. Hello, Vera Security, we make you secure. I wanted to see what secrets the book might contain. There was a photo. Of course, I grabbed it. A very bad photo of Lane in a net. That guy sure got around. What can I do for you? In it, could I just have a quick look in your back office? <laughs> What do you take me for? What? No, no. I, oh, I, I mean, can I look in there? Oh, I see. No, you can't. It's private. Recognize this? Hey, that's my photo. That's you with Lane, I believe. So, what if it is? What is he to you? Oh, my Hector, that's what he is. My little Hector. Yeah, I thought you said you had nothing to do with the gallery. Look, here's how it is. I've only been here a few weeks. I had nothing to do with that gallery job. I just delivered the paperwork. 
So, who was the manager before you? I don't know. She just, one day, didn't come in for work. I shouldn't be talking to you. The boss told me to keep my mouth shut. The boss. Have you got his number or address? No, I've forgotten it. I mean, I never knew it. Annette, a serious crime has been committed. You're in a lot of trouble. I had nothing to do with it. Look, I need this job. I need the money. Anyway, it's only a silly old painting. No one got hurt. The gallery owner was shot. Badly? Yeah, he's pretty dead. Oh. This is a murder investigation. Now, who's your boss? I don't know. Honest, he faxes me if he wants anything. He? Who's he? I've never seen him, never met him. Hmm. Don't make trouble for poor Annette. Thanks. I was pretty sure Annette had told me all she was going to. She sounded scared. Time to put the thumb screws on Lane, and I knew just how. Time to confront Lane. The gallery was sealed off. The place looked empty. Lane wasn't exactly easy to miss, and it looked like he wasn't around. Hi. Monsieur. I'm looking for Mr. Lane. Has he been here? Ah, oh, yes, monsieur. He came by earlier. Told me he was off to console Henri's widow. I hope she's out. Hi. Monsieur, do you recognize the woman in this photo? Uh, she was here the other night with Len. They sneaked away to the gallery together, without paying their bill. My suspicions of Lane were mounting, but I didn't really think he had it in him. The Sacre Coeur Basilica. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to go sightseeing. The door was locked and sealed off with police tape. I needed to find Lane, and I was sure he wasn't in there. The gallery was empty. It looked like Lane was somewhere else. Through the glass, I could see Henri's office. So Lane was consoling the widow. What a big heart that guy had. Did he have a grand scheme or just loose morals? This is George Stobart. May I come up? I'm sorry. This is a very inconvenient time. Come back later. I know that's you, Mr. Lane. I need to talk to you. Mr. Lane, does the name Annette mean anything to you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. If you don't let me in, I'll tell the police about your interesting connection to the security company. Uh, all right, then. 
come up, but make it brief. I need to talk to Madame Dubois. I'm sure it can wait. Dear Lord George, you have the worst timing. Is this a bad time to accuse you of lying? What do you want? I've just come from Vera Security. So? Tell me about Annette. Who? From Vera Security. I don't know any Annette. I'm surprised you let your conquests keep souvenirs. Oh. Where did you get that? Annette lent it to me. Quit waving it around, for God's sake. Come on, Lane. Tell me about Annette. All right, all right. I had a fling with her, okay? Now keep your voice down, please. And you two fixed the security for the robbery? No, nothing like that. Anyway, the, the fling was a mistake. She turned out to be rather needy. I believe you. You're not a criminal, just a lecherous old man. Less of the old, if you don't mind. As it happens, I make a lot of women happy. Especially when you leave them. Can you tell me anything about the owner of Vera? Annette told me he's some angry-looking Russian chap. Okay, Lane. Take off. You can't tell me what to do. You want me to show Bijou this picture? All right, all right, I'm going. You haven't heard the last of me, Stobart. Promise? And give me that photo! If Lane was telling the truth, that meant that Annette was lying. She said she'd never met the owner and was very keen to get rid of me. I wondered if she was hiding something interesting in that back office. Are you going to introduce yourself properly? Pleased to make your acquaintance, madame. My name's George Stobart. Call me Bijou.